Welcome everyone. We will start in a minute as more attendees arrive. Please stay back. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are connecting from. I hope everyone is doing great, and uh, thanks for taking your time to attend the webinar today. To introduce myself, I'm Shashidha. I'm part of uh, Citrix Ready Technical Team, and uh, today we are joined by Kevin Binder, Principal PM from Citrix, and uh, Eric Johnson, Channel System Engineer from Printer Logic, as the presenters of this webinar. Uh, Kevin will walk us through the Citrix workspace intelligence and uh, Eric will talk about how to simplify and secure printing options for Citrix environments. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome you all to this Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series where we showcase how uh, Citrix and our partners have integrated to deliver valuable products and solutions uh, to the common problems faced by our customers today. Next slide, please, Kevin. Thank you. So to just give an overview of uh, Citrix Ready program, Citrix Ready is an end-to-end uh, -end technology partner program which showcases and recommends third-party products, solutions, and uh, services that would demonstrate compatibility with the Citrix products. So uh, we do uh, uh, validate the partner products. Uh, we, do, we have defined few test scenarios uh, once executed. Uh, successfully we get them listed on a catalog called as Citrix Ready Marketplace. You could na navigate to citrixready.citrix.com and find all these Citrix Ready verified products listed there. To gather more information about the Citrix product, uh, Citrix Ready program, you could navigate to citrix.com slash partner programs slash Citrix Ready. Before we start this presentation, we have, uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the question panel on the right hand side and we will take your questions in the Q&A session at the end. So without any further delay, please welcome Kevin. Kevin, thanks for joining us. All over to you. Yeah, thank you, Shashadar. Uh, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we're um, really excited to talk about some new uh, products and some new services that we have available coming up within the next quarter. And so I wanted to share those with you quickly and also give you a quick demonstration of what the new workspace with intelligence um, will look like. Um, so we'll do a quick demonstration. As uh, Shashadar mentioned, if you've got questions, please put those in the question window. And when I get done with my slides, I'll go through those and uh, answer those questions. And also a reminder if you're uh, to keep yourself on mute and uh, so we get a nice clear connection. So, you know, one of the things, uh, if you are an existing, existing Citrix customer or have visited our website recently, you'll notice we're talking a lot about employee experience and we're talking about adding intelligence to the Citrix workspace. And the reason we're doing that and we're focused on that area is to solve some problems that our customers have uh, been telling us about. Uh, number one, they spend too much time searching for information. An employee can spend up to 25%, 20% of their time just looking for the information they need. Um, and that can be, you know, that's one day out of an entire work, work week. We've also found that employees want their enterprise apps to look and act and perform more like consumer apps. A lot of times consumer technology leads enterprise technology in terms of ease of use and that great experience that you might have. And then the last bullet here on this slide is that a lot of the enterprise applications that we work with on a daily basis, uh, they may be able to do hundreds of things, but we may only use four or five functions within those enterprise applications. And so does it really make sense to have to navigate your way through a full-blown enterprise application if you're really only gonna be using it for a couple of functions? And so 
we've got a new solution that's going to help solve a lot of these areas and you know our approach is with the citrix workspace and what we want to do is be able to provide a unified experience to an end user to help organize and guide and automate the way they work so instead of bouncing around from one window to another window to get their all work done we want to try to deliver everything they need for work through a single window or at least a reduced number of windows now here on the right hand side of the slide we can see the existing citrix workspace uh, this workspace we announced a little bit over a year ago and uh, you know we were able to to model this workspace the way we wanted which means it supports all applications and virtualized desktops. So not just virtual apps, but also SaaS apps, web apps, mobile apps, as well as the traditional Citrix virtualized apps. We also wanted to support content, all content, regardless of where it lives. And we know that most of our customers, they their content is living in a combination of things. Some stuff might be on SharePoint. Some stuff might be on OneDrive. Some stuff might be on Box. Some stuff might be on Citrix Content Collaboration. We wanted people to be able to access all of their data all from one place as well. And lastly, we wanted to be device agnostic. Whether you like Macs or whether you like Windows device or whether you like your tablet, we didn't want there to be a penalty based on the type of device or operating system you're using. So we wanted to support all device and operating systems type. And then of course, wrap that around a nice secure perimeter, which a Citrix NetScaler product does, and, um, and have analytics for everything. Now, one of the areas that we thought we could improve is these systems of record here on the left-hand side and these enterprise applications on the left-hand side. Now, we can do single sign-on to those and launch those, but when you launch that application, it's the full-blown application that you have to navigate your way through. And um, that can be complex. And so we wanted to find out a way if we can improve that experience in interacting with these enterprise applications. And our answer for that is a new micro app service. Um, this service is going to be available in Q4, so we're a couple months away. Um, but the basic idea is this. Rather than going to a ServiceNow or a Salesforce or, in this example, SAP, rather than going to SAP Concur, navigating your way through that app to a proven expense report, wouldn't it be better if you were sent a micro app card like you see here that allows you to approve the expense report and saves you the time of having to navigate away from what you're doing to another application? This is called a micro app, and with the new micro app service, we're able to easily build these based on publicly, avail publicly available APIs that the applications on the left-hand side support. The second view here, this is what's called a blade. So if you see the micro app card, and this one's an expense report, and there wasn't quite enough information to approve it, you can click on that card and it'll expand into what we call a blade here to give a little bit more information. But that's the basic idea behind a micro app. So if we look at the new user interface for the Citrix workspace, there's a couple really important things I want to point out. I'm going to give us a quick tour of this in just a minute. We've got our micro app feed. This is a feed of micro apps that goes down the middle of the screen. So consumer-like. So think of it, Facebook, think of Instagram. This is what Gen Z and millennials like, right? This sort of a scrolling list of actions and tasks that we call micro apps. Um, you can also take action if you want up in the upper right hand corner here. So all of these micro app and actions are available, but we still have easy access to all of our applications and our desktops. We still have easy access to all of our files. Look at all these content connectors that we support. We can grab your files from all these different places and present it through a single window with single sign-on. Everything you see here on the screen, we get single sign-on. So you enter a password once and you have access to everything. We have universal search. 
And we have something new called a virtual assistant, which means you can ask it questions and it can uh, complete tasks for you. So that's basically what it looks like. We'll go into more of that in just a minute. Um, but one of the questions we always get is, you know, how many SaaS apps will you support with your micro app service? Now, when this ships in a couple months, right out of the box, we're gonna have a number of templates that are already there and ready for you to do. All you really need to do is put your domain in there. Um, and you can see some of the popular names here, the Salesforce, the Workdays, the ServiceNow, Concur, um, Wind Office 365, Tableau, you know, the list goes on and on. So we'll support a large number of these at release. Um, and we'll, we'll continue to build that library of templates. These are pre-made micro apps. But then the question we get a lot is, well, what if you don't have a pre-made micro app template for the SaaS app that I want to make a micro app with? And the answer to that is we have what's called a micro app builder. This is a really simple, no code required, drag and drop, object oriented interface to allow you to build some of these micro apps with the SaaS applications and web applications that you may be using. Um, we also have a, a web uh, service builder as well. So if you've got a, any uh, web apps that are either on-prem or in the cloud, you can actually build micro apps from them as well. Well, that's from a high level sort of how everything works. Um, and um, now what I'm going to do is give you a quick tour for the next five minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll hand things over to uh, Eric to uh, go over some of the uh, new printer logic stuff. So this is the uh, this is the UI for um, the new workspace app with workspace intelligence. Um, and uh, a couple of things I will add. We, uh, the workspace intelligence, the micro app service, if you will, will be included in our workspace premium and premium plus. So if you already have those, you will get this for free. Um, and uh, if you don't have those, it's a good reason to maybe think about uh, upgrading and uh, getting some new functionality and some new value out of the workspace offer. But here we go with the with a quick tour. This is the micro app feed down the middle. And what we're looking at here is a prototype, although the finished product should look very much like this. Um, so let's go back to do that expense report example again. This is the micro app here. Nicole Baker has submitted an expense report. You know, do we want to approve that? Well, I don't have enough information here to make that decision. So I'm gonna click on the micro app and this is where we see the card. And this gives us a little bit more information about her um, expense report. And again, we're getting this information from the SAP application and presenting it to our workspace app. So let's go ahead and click approve on that one. Um, now let's look at another one here, maybe um, an event reminder with Google Calendar. So rather than having to go over to your, your G Suite and check your Google, Google Calendar, you can see an event reminder right here. Um, and the, the list goes on and on. Maybe someone got, um, got a promotion at work. Uh, maybe um, there's a contract request, but this is the basic idea behind things that are pushed to you. Now, in addition to things that are pushed, you may wanna take action as well. Now, these are all the micro app actions. These are the, out of the box templates that I talked about that will be available at GA. So integration with G Suite directory. So rather than going over to G Suite and creating a user, you can do it directly from your workspace app. Uh, Jira integration, rather than going to Jira to create a ticket, you could create a ticket right here, right from the workspace app. And I won't go through all of these, but the list goes on and on. Um, you know, 15 some odd Salesforce uh, micro apps, ServiceNow micro apps, Workday micro apps, you get the idea. Um, so that's the micro apps. Now we still have access to launching all of our other applications directly from the same UI. Um, we still have the avail availability to launch a 
Windows desktop um, directly from the uh, from the UI. And we have access to all of our files here as well. So bringing your attention over here to the right hand side again, we can easily navigate our most recent apps, our most recent files, our most recent desktops. Um, uh, up here on top, we have the virtual assistant and the search. I'll show you the virtual assistants real quick. We type in view my expense reports, hit enter. Um, that's going to give us a view of our expense reports there. So um, similar to Siri and other things, you know, we'll give recommendations to people on things that they can use the virtual assistant uh, for. Uh, but that's a really nice feature. The search feature is cool. Now, the other thing that's really neat is a lot of people ask, well, you know, do you support Microsoft Teams? Um, we're not trying to replace Teams. We're not trying to replace Slack. We're not trying to replace Outlook, you know, with the, with this uh, workspace app. But we do have an option to send a micro app over to Teams. So whether it's a Teams channel or a Teams user, we can do that. And in fact, through the administration of the micro app service, you can actually send these micro apps to Teams directly. Uh, we're working on the ability to send it to a Slack directly, send it to Outlook directly. So we call that omni-channel, and um, we're going to have this omni-channel support for this micro app service. So we think this workspace app is a great way to work, but we can make other ways of employees working even better by using these micro apps in conjunction with a Slack or a Teams or an Outlook or um, you know a web server. So um, that's the basic idea behind the micro app service and micro apps, and we call this workspace intelligence. So um, with that, I am going to um, hand control over to Kevin. And Kevin's going to walk us through some of the exciting updates with the uh, printer logic. Thanks, Kerry. Kevin, Eric, uh, I've made you the presenter. You can share the screen. Thanks. Perfect. Okay. Um, I think you can see my screen okay now, right? Yes. All right. Perfect. So. Um, hey, so that was pretty interesting to uh, learn a little bit more about Citrix Workspaces and um, kind of the micro apps. That's, that's some exciting stuff that you guys are able to deliver there. Um, as far as kind of how Printer Logic fits into what we're talking about today, um, really what our goal to do for you is to eliminate some of the challenges that might be associated with um, delivering printers to your end users um, as you're starting to use just different Citrix products, whether you're still using ZenApp or Zen Desktop or you've moved into workspaces. Um, our goal is to kind of simplify that. So what I want to do is just take you through a little bit about our company. If you're unfamiliar, just take just a few minutes and then I'll actually show you a live demonstration of the product. Some of the things that it's going to help you with in your Citrix environment and uh, just kind of some overall features that are going to help you eliminate your print server and move over to a a centralized direct IP uh, managed platform. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, a little bit about Printer Logic, like I said, established in 2001. There's over 200 of us here, um, and we've been a Citrix Ready certified partner since 2018. So kind of new for us to be uh, certified with them, but the product has really not changed in terms of its functionality in Citrix. We've been um, very effective in having a, a large customer base come to us from uh, Citrix based customers. So um, the technology is still the same. We just went in and got certified so we could have this stronger partnership with Citrix. So that's kind of what you're seeing from us now. And really the overall goal of Printer Logic is to eliminate print servers. We're able to optimize your print performance. And um, in turn, that helps reduce your help desk calls as we start to kind of eliminate infrastructure and eliminate challenges. Um, related to printing and we can also do this as an on-prem service if you're still focused on um, using print in an on-prem kind of way instead of like a cloud-based or SaaS based solution but we're really leading the charge today um, amongst all the competition is the only truly serverless printer management uh, SaaS based solution so it's a little bit about us and just to give you kind of an idea 
of verticals that we work in. I've included a few customers just so you can see that. Um, I, I think the thing that everybody on the call knows is that printing exists in every different type of environment. So um, it really doesn't matter what type of organization you are, we can work really effectively um, in that space to help you eliminate infrastructure and manage your printing. Um, it's just kind of like a 30 second quick pitch. This is, this is us as a whole. We basically help IT professionals eliminate all their print servers and we're delivering a highly available serverless printing infrastructure. And we're doing that with Central Managed Direct IP platform. With that, you can empower your users with mobile printing, secure release printing, uh, and a lot of other advanced features that legacy print applications just, they don't provide. So that's us kind of in a nutshell. What I wanna do is take you now through just a couple architecture diagrams, just to kind of show you um, maybe some of the existing infrastructure that you have and how you approach print right now, and maybe talk about some of the challenges with, with that. And then we can talk about how to clean those up and make that simple. So the first idea here is a centralized print server. Um, as far as a centralized print server, I, I feel like that's among the most common um, of any kind of configurations that I typically see in a customer environment. And you can see that option on the left. Just a tremendous amount of traffic. Like first and foremost, we can see WAN traffic is a big challenge. If the print servers are centralized, you're generating vast amounts of unnecessary WAN traffic um, when you're using auto-created printers. And that's because the print job has to make two extra trips across the WAN before it's even printed at a local printer that might be literally like a few feet away from the uh, endpoint device or the customer. Um, and so that's one of the big challenges right there with just like a centralized print server model. Um, you can see over here on a distributed model, uh, we still have some challenges. It's a little bit cleaner in terms of WAN, WAN traffic, but again, we're pushing those printers over into the session, then sending our jobs back over the ICA channel, and then they're going to the print server rendering there and then being sent to the network printer. So a couple things that these two diagrams have in common is a print server. Um, and that print server, I mean, it's typically gonna let you down whether you virtualize it or whether it's um, you know, a regular print server in your environment. Those print servers can go down. And when those print servers go down, people can't print. So usually the solution to that is to create that distributed model in the first place to kind of create like a pseudo high availability environment, right? Make it so that you don't have um, just one single point of failure, but really what you're doing is you're introducing more points of failure into your architecture and exposing yourself from a security perspective to more potential attack vectors with, um, you know, servers on the infrastructure that have elevated privileges. And I mean, you're just, increasing that uh, network perimeter, right? So a lot of different things to consider when we're dealing with print servers. If we're doing session printing, typically, um, you know, we might have uh, a configuration, whether it's centralized or distributed. Again, you can kind of see the same problems here, right? Um, now we're getting rendered and uncompressed jobs sent across the uh, WAN. And so that can be kind of an additional negative on top of what we've already established with having the print servers there. Um, other things that just typically can happen in a Citrix environment when we don't have everything uh, mapped out correctly or we have some challenges in delivering printers to end users are like a crashing print spooler. Um, it's usually the result of some type of rogue driver um, that's going to cause a user to lose the ability to print. And so what happens is when we have this driver, we'll deal with like a spooler crash, right? And that's going to produce a ticket and that's going to send an administrator hunting for whatever that driver is that's causing that problem before the next schooler crash happens again after they reset things. Um, again, in either scenario, you're still gonna deal with things like vanishing and missing printers because you're trying to deal with the deployment via um, like a GPO or a script um, that are supposed to deliver the printers into sessions. Those can fail, right? And then a user end up with either a printer that unusable or one that doesn't even appear sometimes when they access the session. So another challenge, right? Um, like I said, GPOs are a challenge with this too. Uh, they can be unreliable as well and kind of create that long log on time that can annoy end users because, you know, they want things right away. Um, 
Another thing I see is just proximity printers. Um, again, this is kind of just layers of complexity in terms of how a printer is being deployed. And as those things start to corrupt or we start to get more complex, then again, we deal with vanishing and missing printers. So we keep having this kind of loop where different issues cause different challenges and then the cycle repeats itself, right? Um, it could even be driver congestion, having multiple different drivers bloating your golden image or populating your Citrix server with too many drivers. Um, again, you're gonna run into performance issues, right? You're gonna have crashes of that spooler and all of this compounds into just help desk call after help desk call. So with us, what we're doing is we're gonna simplify that process. That's our whole goal. We want to eliminate the servers out of the infrastructure right away uh, in terms of your print servers, right? Get rid of it. What we'll do is convert you over to a centrally managed direct IP model. So now all of your printers are controlled um, in this administrative interface that I'll show you in just a second. And what we can do is actually place our client agent on the workstations uh, in like an auto-created or redirected scenario. And that way we're actually pushing the um, drivers down to those workstations if you're thinking like uh, like fit client kind of scenario, right? So now what we're doing is pushing those drivers down, having clear, clean policies that go into place that will not prolong users' login times, that will deliver printers accurately and allow you to auto-create or redirect those um, into your Citrix session and print really, really simply and really cleanly. And again, no print server here, so no single point of failure. If we ever have an issue with the workstation, that's about the only thing that would affect printing performance because we're not relying on printer logic or really on your Citrix server or any other part of the infrastructure to allow this print command to take place. All the workload is right here on the workstation. And you might think, okay, well, what about huge massive print jobs? Like, are we gonna have problems with that? We've done extensive testing with that in all sorts of different environments and really never see any challenges related to the workstation being able to handle those print jobs. Um, so yeah, you've eliminated that component of infrastructure and saved yourself probably some money in the process by eliminating that server and gotten rid of a point of failure in the process and just kind of cleaned up some WAM traffic issues. Session printing, kind of the same idea, right? The only thing you notice that's a real difference here is that we don't have our client agent on the workstation anymore. So maybe we're dealing with like a zero or thin client infrastructure here. So now we've just put our client agent in a Citrix server and kind of put it in a remote desktop type mode. Uh, this basically just allows the client that's placed on the Citrix server to identify um, multiple simultaneously logged in users. So we're still gonna see the host name, the IP address of this endpoint device, whatever it is, be able to control what printers get delivered to that user when they access their sessions and print. And then the job is just sent here from the Citrix server to the printer. So again, no printer in the equation, even if we do have this uh, rendered uncompressed job being sent over, we still have the benefit of not sending it to a point of failure in our architecture. So like I said, just kind of removing a few steps out of the equation and simplifying Citrix printing. Um, so what I wanna do now is actually take you through a quick demonstration of the software so you can see what you're getting, kind of what that interface looks like. So here I have my printer logic administrator console. And um, you can kind of see here, we've got some tools across the top. I've selected a printer. If I select a folder, I have different controls and I'll talk to some of these features, but this is kind of what this single pane of glass looks like for you to manage all of your printers. And some of you, if any of you are in the healthcare space, you might see that I have this EMR plugged in here. We can also support you from that perspective as well, help you manage the servers that might be required for an epic infrastructure. So um, we're definitely not limited in scope to uh, what we can manage, whether it is an existing print server that's required by the infrastructure or you know, just eliminating the print server as a whole. Um, how we do that's really simple actually. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking, yeah, um, might be kind of cool to get rid of my print server, but I don't know if I have time for this project. I mean, typically our engineers in a free proof of concept scenario can help you spin up a, a printer logic instance um, in about five minutes and then do a lot of the setup in just an hour long meeting with you. So pretty easy to do. This is what it looks like if we want to import um, 
servers or import printers, excuse me. We have the first option from uh, the Microsoft print server. We can just tap right into that print server and copy over the queues. Um, or we can do a network scanner. I'd say these are the two most common. This will just search through a subnet, find any active printers that you have, and put them right in here. And this is what an imported printer is going to look like. Printer name, location, comment if you populated that, web interface, you get your port information, raw, LPR. 9100 is going to be really important here. That's the only thing that we're really going to need access to from a port perspective, just making sure that that client workstation can communicate with that printer via 9100. The only other port that we really need access to is 443 because that client that we place on the workstation, it communicates over port 443 back to this administrator console and that's how it pulls the effective changes that an administrator would make. Now it's not constantly checking all the time, it checks in after startup or log on after any other process has taken place. So you usually don't see any kind of negative impact on login time in a Citrix environment or any other environment. And again, it's just metadata that's being pushed back and forth other than the driver. So you really don't see um, from a network perspective any kind of impact there. Now, um, it's also, if you use that print server import tool, one of the cool things about it, it's gonna copy over the drivers that you're using on your print server. So literally all you do, choose the way that you wanna collect your printers, push out a client agent to the workstation or to the Citrix server, and that client does support Windows, Mac, and Linux. So you're not limited in terms of scope for um, what you wanna do there. And any of you that may be working with Citrix and also using iGel, may know that we're actually already embedded in iGEL's operating system as well. So it even takes that step of distributing our client um, to the workstation out of the equation. But if you are distributing that client, really simple. Do it any way you typically distribute an MSI, PKG, or DEB file. It'll work just fine. Push the client to the workstation, collect your printers from the print server, you're done. Two-step process. And you could actually pull the plug on your print server at that point. You wouldn't need it. Um, we go live with the solution as soon as the workstations are under management with that client there. Literally, when the client hits the workstation, it goes through devices and printers. Uh, and this is a silent process, by the way. So no impact to the end user's perspective, no change in their default settings or anything until you go in afterwards and start changing policies. And I'll show you how that can be done. But yeah, for the end users, client hits the workstation. They may not even know that it's there. And it goes through and converts all those queues to direct IP, if they're not already direct IP queues, and it assumes management of them. So once we've done that, then we can start coming in here and making changes. So, you know, first thing you can see is I have some conflicting drivers. I've set it up this way just to show you how easy it is to switch. So let's say that this is an HP. I'm just gonna switch it over to this universal HP driver here. That's how easy it is for me to change for the different operating systems that I might be supporting. We will support any manufacturer here. So we're totally agnostic in terms of what printers we can support. As long as it is a TCP IP printer, you're good to go. And as long as we have a signed driver, we'll support it. One of the things you're seeing me do here is I'm adding in profiles. This is really cool for end users because what we can do is tap into any feature of that driver that you've chosen to upload and push that out as a consistent profile that gets reapplied after each print job on end users workstations. So if you wanted to set up a standard for black and white duplex printing, just to help you save a little bit on color cost and paper cost, but you don't want to limit the way that your users work because I mean, you know, that's part of the point of moving into, uh, you know, Citrix workspaces is to create that amazing usability for end users to navigate to the applications and services that they need to do their jobs. Um, sometimes I'll see somebody implement something like a rules-based system um, and quota management and stuff like that as a way to introduce savings and to kind of control their print environment. But I mean, that's one strategy and you can do it. But I think overall, reducing server costs and eliminating help desk calls is a way better way to um, produce more value and get a better return on your investment in a way that doesn't impact users' day-to-day -day workflows and performance. So 
this is a cool way to introduce new standards. You can use Secure Print through the driver itself or through our software, we offer that service. Um, but this is one of the cool things about the product is that it's using the native drivers instead of prescribing that you use a universal driver to solve all your problems. Instead, you're actually getting the drivers that are applied to the physical devices that you're spending money on that are so feature rich. You wanna be able to tap into those features and we allow you to do that um, with printer logic. Now, that doesn't mean that you may not choose to use a universal driver like I've selected here. There might be other reasons for that. You might want to use uh, like a Citrix UPD and kind of have a driverless architecture to take advantage of that compression. That works fine. Uh, as long as your Citrix policy defines which, which driver to use in that type of session print scenario, or excuse me, in redirected scenario, then you're good to go. Um, you can choose that option as well and have that apply in your Citrix sessions. Really, for us, it's up to you. It doesn't matter if you're doing um, auto creation, redirection, or if you're doing session print. We can go with you to those places and provide a solution. Um, and one of the cool parts about it, in addition to the driver management side, is how we deal with the deployment of printers. So here what I can do is I can actually tap into my infrastructure using Active Directory. Again, we don't have to connect over 389 or 636 to use this feature. What's happening is the client's just picking up a little bit of uh, metadata on the workstation. Super simple. And then you're able to tap into security groups, users, computers, containers, OUs, whatever, to control how that printer gets deployed without creating a script or a GPO. It's literally just like adding somebody to a security group. I choose that option, enter the name of that user or group, whatever it is, say okay, and I've added them in. I have a couple example deployments. You can see I have a MAC address here. Um, I have IP address ranges that are possible and host names. Um, we can do this, do wildcards, so you can deploy to multiple sites with ease of access. It's pretty slick that way. Um, the cool thing about this IP address range that I think is, is pretty interesting is we can actually control the proximity of that deployment process. So what happens is, let's say I'm in building A, in my headquarters, which is, we're based in St. George, Utah, just so everybody knows, pretty close to Las Vegas. And um, we've got a couple different buildings at this site. If I'm in building A, then I'm part of this subnet right here, let's say. When I move to building A, the printers that automatically deploy on my workstation are these seven printers. They just show up, one set up as the default always. Now, if I leave that range, let's say I go over to building C, right? and now I'm a part of this new subnet. What happens is the old printers will drop off and these three printers will pick up at building C and it'll just be dynamic like that. No requirement really of the end user to change anything. Um, the IP address changes and so that client, when it checks in, it sees that change, drops off the old printers and adds the new ones. And it's not doing it to the driver, just so you know, the driver's staying put. So the login times and latency and things like that no effect on that. It's just provisioning that new printer, making it accessible. Um, so once the drivers are installed, it's just kind of a back and forth, really slick process. Um, I see it a lot in healthcare as a, a very popular way to deploy. And, you know, just any organization that has employees that might roam from either floor to floor, if they're subnetted accordingly, or from site to site. So really cool capability there. Um, other things that are gonna help you in terms of just the awareness of your environment, um, the ability to manage your queue. Again, we're not having print jobs go through printer logic software or printer cloud or, or um, any of our products, whether it's on-prem or based in the cloud. No job goes through the server. It's going on the workstation, it's direct IP, like I've kind of uh, made pretty clear, I think. But you still get queue management because we can see jobs from metadata that's passed from the client to printer uh, logic SaaS based solution or on-prem. And we can actually see those jobs, select them and purge them or delete them. It's sending a remote stop signal down to the client on the workstation, just so you're aware of what's happening. We also have monitoring happening as well. So um, in this case, you know, I don't have it on, but there could be an error condition. Um, that's populated, we might see like a printer that goes offline or something like that. Um, we also have the ability to check alerts. So let's say a printer does go offline or we have low paper, low toner, 
just other things we might care about that could eventually lead to a help desk ticket if a user sees it before we do. We can choose anything that we care about from this list of possible SNMP triggers, and we can send those to who we want to see them. Now, this could route into a ticketing system if that can do it via email, or you can add in your administrative users and have them be alerted. So right now, myself and Michael would be alerted if this particular demo printer has any of these issues populate. So really cool way to stay aware, kind of know what's going on. Um, over here, I have some different capabilities in terms of like what we're doing with adding in users. So uh, here you see me, um, you see Michael that I added as well. We can either use your Active Directory infrastructure for this, or we can create it local to the software. Um, and then we have role-based access controls that allow you to completely determine what features end users can see at a super granular level. So I can control with view or modify access just about every feature of anything that we have in Printer Cloud um, or Printer Installer, um, which is really cool. So if we have the help desk joining in and participating in the management, we can limit their scope. So maybe they're not going to see a lot of this back end stuff. Maybe we choose to have somebody who needs to keep track of reports, like how many um, print jobs users are printing or different departments are printing. We can actually make this look like it's just a report management interface as well. It just depends on the role-based access controls and what you set up. But let me just give you a quick overview of this. And I think that's about all we have time to show today. Um, let me just show you a records report so you can kind of see what we capture in our reporting suite. And again, this solution is designed to completely replace your print infrastructure and a lot of the other tools that you might be using to help you quantify what's going on with print. So you can see I kind of have all this information here on my print jobs. These are records, individual print jobs that are going through. So just a sample one, date, time, here's the user, their department, um, here's the uh, workstation that they printed from, here's the printer they printed to, some active directory information about their manager and their department. Um, here's the name of the job. We'll capture the name, but again, the job is not going through the server, right? Um, or the application server, I should say. Here's the number of pages. Uh, we have kind of some different ways to quantify that as well. So black and white, color, duplex, um, number of pages, cost per page, all that kind of stuff. So we can track all that information and we can do it not with just TCP IP printers that we're managing, but also USB printers. So if you have those local printers that are part of your network and you want to monitor those a little bit more closely, we can do that. No charge for it. As far as the uh, licensing is concerned with our product, all we care about is the TCP IP printers that you are managing. So typically it's going to be however many printers you have, it's how many licenses of printer logic software that you need. Now there might be a couple caveats to that. Let me just show you one. Uh, printer 11 here. Maybe I want to push a color queue to one group and I want to totally limit the scope of another printer and only do a black and white driver to another group of users. In that case, we consider it two different managed objects, even though it is the same physical printer. It's two separate queues by our view. And so you may have um, multiple licenses consumed by one printer. It's typically not the most common case, but I do want to make you aware of that. As far as users are concerned, though, totally unlimited by the number of users uh, and very scalable through SMB all the way to major enterprise customers. I think if you looked at that list of logos, you can see we have everything from, uh, you know, organizations like Nintendo up to organizations like Department of Homeland Security. And just so you're aware, Department of Homeland Security eliminated about 400 print servers with our software. Their return on investment for the purchase was, it was just unreal pulling out that many print servers is about 1.6 million. So um, we're totally capable in that space to provide a solution that works all the way around um, from any kind of part of printing that you have in your environment, whether it's Citrix based, whether it's um, uh, any kind of other product that you might be using for virtualization, we can support you where you're at now and where you intend to transition to. So um, I see a lot of our customers moving from Windows 7 to Windows 10 still and we can help transition that process as well, really simply, without any pain for the end user or for the administrator. Um, last thing I want to touch on, just let you know that there are also 
um, mobile print options that are built into the solution that are included with the product. So if you want to do like a follow me print scenario, publish a single queue to end users and have them be able to walk up to printers and release jobs with their badge, we could do that too. Really easy, it's built into the product. We can keep those things secure so they're not sitting out on the tray. We can either integrate with the control panel on the actual MFP that you have, or we can do like um, kind of a simple badge release where you use like RF ideas to be able to scan badges and automatically release jobs without having that interface. It's kind of up to you what you want to design there. Then we also have uh, the ability to do native iOS printing. We'll print with Android. We have Google Cloud print solutions as well. Um, so we basically have everything from A to Z in terms of what you might want to introduce in your printing environment. And it's all built into this platform right here. Um, if you're interested, we would love to set up a free proof of concept with you. Um, and I think now what we want to do is set aside a little time for everybody to do Q&A, whether it's about printer logic or if it's um, you know about what Citrix presented to you earlier today. So if you want to step into the chat and you have questions, we can either pay attention here um, and uh, either answer those in the chat or, or verbally answer those. Um, guys from the webinar, anything else that we want to cover before we move to Q&A? Yep. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Kevin, as well. And I think we have covered more, most of the topics that we had in the agenda. So we have a few questions from our audience as well. Let me take those okay. up. So, so the first question uh, would be for Kevin. Uh, it's related to Citrix workspace intelligence. So one of the gentlemen is asking, is this replacing the sorry, is this replacing the Citrix workspace desktop installation? No, it's not. Um, you know, and that's one thing that we want to make really clear. This is not um, something different. It's a new service with the existing workspace and workspace app. So just like endpoint management is a service and content collaboration is a service, this is a service. Now, if you have the micro app service and workspace intelligence, um, turned on your ui on the workspace app will look a little bit different right you'll have the intelligent feed down the middle if you don't have the workspace intelligence turned on then it'll look more like the traditional workspace app um, rather than the new ui so um, we want to be clear on that that we want to have a path for our customers to get from point a to point b but they don't have to completely replace what they've got. In fact, if you're an existing Citrix customer with your virtual apps and desktops on-prem and everything's working fine and you wanna leave it that way, you can actually add the micro app service as one of our workspace services to your existing Citrix infrastructure and present everything to your users through a new front end, through the new UI. Uh, we can do that so um, hopefully that answers your question but yes you don't have to replace what you've got you're basically building upon what you've got thanks kevin uh, we have one more question for you kevin uh, is there already an officially approved material on the micro apps that we could use to share with customers and prospects and use for landing pages on our websites yeah so it's a good question uh, we have a we have a number of uh, we have a, a bunch of information on citrix.com already um, we have a couple webinars that we did that we can be shared with customers if you go to our main citrix.com and go down to the bottom and click on events you can find links to on-demand webinars on workspace intelligent you can send those to customers for those of you on the line that are a Citrix partner um, or Citrix employees, uh, on our Sales IQ platform, uh, we have a whole bunch of material from customer presentations, demo scripts, uh, how to get a demo account. So um, there's a lot of resources already available um, on this topic because we announced it back in May at Synergy. So there's quite a bit of information out there already. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. So the next one would be for Eric. Uh, Eric, 
then the question is why wouldn't you want a print server to manage printing so i would say again related to that topic that your print server is going to function as a point of failure in your environment it can go down um, it's kind of ineffective at its job it doesn't support the whole ecosystem if you have a mac environment um, it's really going to just kind of help you work with windows and like i said um, the more print servers that you introduce the more points of failure you have in your architecture um, you also end up with like i said security vulnerabilities as you have an elevated privileged uh, server that's vulnerable to attacks um, that can help you know kind of infect printers and cause problems in the infrastructure so um, that combined with the cost of maintaining a print server and its limited capabilities uh, would lead me to want to eliminate all of those as i start to add more points of management to my perimeter i exponentially increase the challenges and exposures that i have um, and the cost as well so kind of pulling those out of the equation just makes a lot of sense if you have a viable solution like printer logic um, to help you in that process okay yep. thanks Ray. and the follow-up question is how would remote workers home printers be dealt with so those wouldn't be in the scope of management for um, the unless they are of course and we deal with it a little bit differently but most likely those wouldn't be in the scope of management for the administrator so basically all you would have to know is just don't add those into the administrator console and then our client agent won't register those as visible printers that it should be managing okay okay so the next one is okay it's like separate tool like and printer logic agent should be installed on endpoint and citrix servers is that right um, it depends on the scenario. So if we're dealing with like a zero or a thin client, then of course we couldn't put a client agent from printer logic on that endpoint. So that's a scenario where that client agent would be then installed on the Citrix server and put into a, a multiple client mode to deal with all those endpoints that do not have a client on them. If we have workstations like your typical laptop or a thick client, that client, whatever you want to call it, then yeah we would put the printer logic client on that endpoint um, it's basically just how you've chosen to design your own um, end user workflow and environment we can adapt to that we could have even hybrid scenarios where the client is on a citrix server or on that endpoint it just kind of depends on what you'd like to do if that makes okay. sense Thanks, Eric. So the next one is, how is a SaaS-based solution different than a cloud-based solution? So um, in my opinion, kind of what's happening is we see a lot of cloud-focused technologies that are actually just kind of a lift and shift type idea. You've taken things that are on-premises resources and you've just moved them into the cloud. But a SaaS-based solution is a little bit different because it's not just lifted and shifted it's a solution that's available for consumption at the behest of the customer right so as you need more licenses those are provisionable there without you having to tap into the server infrastructure where the application is being hosted and make changes to the infrastructure there basically you have unlimited available resources to you um, and you're able to provision what you need and pay for that in a subscription model so you can expand or contract as your business needs demand. I would say those are the big differences between just a cloud-based technology and a true SaaS solution. And Printer Logic is a true SaaS solution that doesn't require any administrative support for you on the back end with the server infrastructure. It's just ready to go. Okay, awesome. Okay, so there are a few more questions. Um, but in the interest of time, I will take this last one. So, um, Eric, how does printer logic excel in a Citrix environment? Well, I think we kind of went over some of the details related to that, but overall it's about eliminating those, um, those burdens that you might see um, as you're dealing with challenges in deploying printers, having them consistently show up on workstations, um, and how the drivers are managed and 
how latency affects the performance of your infrastructure, how it impacts your end users. And again, like I said as well, the elimination of help desk tickets is going to be a big part of that overall performance for your organization. So I think those are some of the key takeaways for how Printer Logic um, can help you in a Citrix environment. Okay, awesome. Hey, uh, Kevin, thanks. And uh, Eric, thanks a lot for joining this webinar and uh, taking time to um, uh, answer the questions as well uh, asked by the audience. So with that said, we are about to end the webinar. Uh, Kevin or Eric, do you have any final words for our audience? Um, for me, I'd say thank you for participating. We really appreciate it and uh, look forward to hearing from you if you're interested in trying the software for free. Yeah, this is Kevin. I would just say yes. Uh, again, thanks everyone for your time. We're really excited about this launch of uh, Workspace Intelligence coming up. So um, if you got questions, please reach out to your sales reps and we can come give you a live demonstration or get you all, all the information that you need. Absolutely. So yeah, if you have questions, you could reach out to us as well at citrixready at citrix.com and we will be sharing this recording as well post the webinar and if you have any uh, questions which are left out here, we will answer them as well via email. So once again, I'll thank you all for attending today's webinar in the Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series and this concludes our broadcast. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you.